Hello, this is Andrew from MagStore here to show you how to install and use your MagStore Thunderbolt 3 tape drive. Here I am navigating to the website to download the required files, but they're also located on the flash drive that came with your MagStore. So if you've lost the flash drive or are installing this on a new computer, this is how you would do it. If you don't intend to use the MagStore LTFS companion app, you only need to install the drivers so that your Mac can see the device. First, we're going to install the LTFS companion app. There are three files you'll need to install before the app will function, not including the driver for the device itself. If you'll be using other software, you can skip straight to the installation of the ArcSAS driver. When you're installing these files, you'll need to give them the permission to run in your security and privacy preferences. Your Mac will likely request that you open this panel automatically during the install, but in case it does not, you can get to it by going to the Apple in the top left corner of your screen, Preferences, and then Security and Privacy. Click the lock, type in your password, and then click Allow. Keep this window open to save yourself some time, since you'll be installing multiple files. If you attempt to install the LTFS SDE before the ICU framework, it will complain, so install the ICU framework first, then the LTFS SDE. Next, we'll install the ArcSAS driver, which will allow the device to be seen. Just like the other installs, you'll need to give this permission. You'll be prompted to restart your computer after this installation. As of macOS Catalina, you need to install this driver twice in order for it to function. I won't show the second install, but if your device is not showing up and you're running Catalina, install the ArcSAS driver a second time and it should fix the issue. With the ArcSAS driver installed, we can now run the LTFS companion app. Open the companion app and give it permission to run. This will be the last time you have to do this. Now turn on your MagStore tape drive and give it about a minute to fully initialize. You'll know it's ready when the drive has a solid green ring of light to the right of the eject button. I'm speaking of the physical Thunderbolt 3 drive itself, not the software. I am currently attempting to mount the tape I've inserted the tape into the drive, but this mount will fail because the tape I've inserted is new and has not been formatted yet. This application is for mounting LTFS tapes. If your tape is not formatted for LTFS, it will not be able to mount using this application. New tapes and tapes using TAR format will not mount unless formatted to LTFS. Formatting will delete all data on the tape. Any tape containing data will require that the Force Format button is checked in order to decrease the likelihood of accidental data loss. The Stay Awake button is more to show that the feature exists within the software than to actually be turned on or off. If it's causing some issue with your Mac, you can turn it off. However, having your Mac sleep while the tape is mounted may cause data loss, so it's safer to keep it on. A side benefit of using Thunderbolt 3 and our MagStore cable is that power can be transmitted through the cable, keeping your laptop alive while you back up your data. While you can remove hard disk drives and solid state drives safely if no data is being moved, it's very important that you unmount tapes before turning off the device it's mounted to. Not doing so can lead to data loss on the tape. You should also remove the tape from the drive before you turn the drive off. Having it sit can put stress on the tape. You can name your tape and enter a six digit serial number to help track your tapes, but this is optional.
Now the mount is working, but how do we access the drive from the computer? In the Finder, it'll act like a new drive connected to the Mac, but you likely want it in a more easily accessible location. If you select a Finder window and then click Finder, Preferences, under Show These Items on the Desktop, select Connected Servers. Hard drives and mounted tapes will now show up on your desktop for easy access. As an example, I'm going to drop one of the DMG files we downloaded earlier into the tape. Now I'm mounting a hard drive in the hard drive bay. This hard drive is formatted for Windows and I can't use it. I'm going to reformat it using Disk Utilities. Once again, as with tape, formatting will delete all data on this drive, but I was using this as a fresh install test and I don't really need it, so it's safe for me to format it. I highlight the drive, see that it's labeled as a SAS external physical volume. I have no other SAS devices and I see this drive is labeled NTFS or the Windows file system. So I'm fairly confident that it's safe to delete this drive. So I click erase and I rename the volume. Change the format to APFS or Apple file system. I don't need the encryption. All right, with that done, I can now transfer data to the drive inside of my mag store. Something to note about the LTFS format is that items cannot be truly deleted unless you reformat the tape. This is due to the fact that the tape is written linearly. Once you begin taking space on the tape, you cannot free up space by deleting files. You can only reclaim the space on the tape by reformatting the tape. With a huge amount of storage and the use case of tape, this does not end up being a big deal, but it's something to keep in mind. I can transfer files between the hard drive and the tape drive as seen here. The speed of the hard drive will limit the speed of the tape drive in this case, as I'm not using a solid state drive, but it works for what I'm doing. I'm going to eject my hard drive. Hard drives are pretty hardy when it comes to disconnecting without unmounting, but it's better to be safe than sorry when it comes to data. These two boxes are where the tape name and serial would appear had I entered one. I will then unmount the tape using the companion app. The LTFS app is great for shallow, low-complexity data, but you're going to run into trouble if you try to use it for deep, high-complexity data. That is to say, if you try to move your entire hard drive to it, you're likely going to run into issues, as finder moving procedures are not up to the task. For higher-complexity data, such as deeply nested file structures, you should look towards paid software designed for that task. I can now exit the program. That's about all there is to show. If I left any questions unanswered, please feel free to ask in the comments below. And thanks for choosing MagStore.